what's going on everybody welcome back to the channel today gonna go over some trades with you again so again if you watch my video last week you'll know that I've kind of switched from trading these high fast movers although again today <laughs> I uh, couldn't help myself and was trying to trade ICCM and uh, failed and it's just funny cuz I kind of wanted to buy it down here and I thought you know maybe when it broke the view op that it was gonna hold this low SMA right the 20 SMA and then still go so I was like you know what maybe I'll buy it down here but then before I got a chance to throw in an order it was already back up you know and it took off so I, I got some FOMO unfortunately I missed that trade um, I tried to catch it at 443 here off the basically just catching a bounce because um, it was the first red candle and like every other time we had a red candle back here we had it shot up so like the volume was still green um, and it did go green like I actually had like 20 cents like it was up to uh, 467 you know from a 443 entry so if I would have sold there I would have been up like 20 bucks but unfortunately I ended up cutting it because it flew flush back down and then um, I kind of tried another bounce off the mid channel hoping that maybe it was just gonna stay you know strong and then it would get a bounce off the VWAP or something but it started to look really weak and the the selling volume started to really come in and obviously this candle here it looks like it's a lot of green but you can see there was a lot of selling in that candle so there was really wasn't a lot of buying volume after this um, you know basically after this initial morning push which generally is what happens so I shouldn't be too um, surprised by that anyway so that was that was uh, that one, and uh, then I tried to trade some VRNA. Um, this stock, you know, I still think it could run. I still like it. It had a, a buyout this morning, and it literally jumped from 14 to 23. Um, so, or not a buyout, but some positive news on one of its like trials for like liver, a liver drug, or some kind of drug trial. So, it, it there's really good news for this stock, which is why I thought maybe it would hold you know maybe 1850 and then go but this candle was a was a real flush so after that you got kind of all the buyers got flushed out and uh, now everybody's just kind of unsure what to do with it so the volume is still to the red side so you don't I didn't want to jump in after that after that I kind of took my losses it wasn't a big loss at all maybe like five bucks ten bucks but I just kind of wanted to give it a shot um, but so those are the stocks that I lost on today and as if you watch my video on Friday, you'll know that I talked about how I wanted to switch from trading these like fast moving, these hard to, you know, hard to read stocks that really just didn't give you any opportunities other than the ones that were already presented either right off the open or, you know, once it flushes, it kind of goes so fast that you, you just don't get a chance to catch them because they're such volatile names. So as I was saying on Friday I wanted to switch to start it trading the spy a little more focusing on the spy trading puts trading calls basically just trading options on the spy was what I wanted to do and of course it flushes lower now but um, you'll see that I got out with a nice profit I kinda wanted to go long to be honest with you so I was actually looking at buying calls here but I, I wasn't quick enough and it kinda ripped so fast that I was like you know it ripped right back up into resistance and that's where I was kind of looking to take profit if I had bought down here so I wasn't expecting it to break out um, although it was really strong so that's when I started to look for longs even thought about a call buying calls here but uh, I just was very hesitant I, I really don't know the market the last you know couple weeks has been so negative it's been so much selling that I didn't want to necessarily step in trying to buy calls if the market was just going to reverse like it did um, so what I was waiting for was kind of a reversal and a crack of the trend line. So you saw this trend line starting to form from this morning because there was down resistance and it turned into support. And then you had this kind of big push up. It, it held that trend line. And then as soon as it cracked that trend line and it looked like it was not going to hold, you started to see this downward, um, <clears throat> this downward pressure forming, right? And you can see that this downward pressure is still what's keeping it down right so this downward pressure is now what you're looking at in terms of that's why like it would have been a good short here because it's coming right up into this descending resistance 
And that's kind of what my thought process was, was, okay, um, you know, and this is probably a little more like this, but um, what I was looking at was once it cracked that trend line and came back up and then hit this 20 period SMA, I was looking for buying put contracts thinking that this was going to crack lower. It was going to crack the VWAP and we were going to have a reversal, right? So that's what my thought process was, but I had to wait to see to make sure it cracked that trend line. And this is something that, um, you know, I, I don't mind shouting out the people that are doing this. So there's Deckmar Trades on YouTube. Check them out, Sean Deckmar. And then the other one I watch is like uh, Trader TV Live. So these are guys that I usually watch for, but although True Trading Group is, is another group that I'm a part of now. So True Trading Group uh, is probably one of the better trading groups out there. You can see them. They were on Trader TV Live for a while, but um, check them out if you guys like. They're more into trading larger caps, and um, although sometimes they don't have the best ideas for small shorting and small caps, um, that's really what I'm trying to get away from anyway. So that's my little pitch there. Investor Underground is also really good for shorting. If you guys want, if you guys can get shorts, you know you guys can um, find shorts. One of the hardest things about brokers like Quest Trade, the one I use, is that they're decent for shorting, but a lot of times the the stocks that are the best to short you can't get shares so it just kind of leaves you with you know sitting there being like man i wish i could have shorted it i would have made so much money but but it doesn't give you the option right so anyway um with with options though it doesn't matter you can trade short you can trade long it doesn't really matter right you can always get shares to trade because you can just buy a put contract right which is betting for the stock to go down so that's what i did today um so you can see down here um, and maybe I'll switch it because I know that sometimes it's hard for everybody to see. But just as you know that like this was the area right here where I was going short. So basically 11.05. So this candle right here, right at the top, I, I went short. Well, I bought a put contract. Um, and so um, if you go over to options and then you go to puts and then you go to the 382 put because that's where the stock was closer to. So I was buying 382 puts, right? Um, but I was also buying them for December for tomorrow, not for today. So this was the trade that I took, right? And so, I'll, and I'll put the spy back down here. Although you guys won't really be able to see it because my face is probably in the way. But uh, I showed you guys where I entered the spy anyway. So with these, you know, as I was saying, I entered right here around eleven oh five. So. Uh, if you're looking at the spy chart, I'll bring it over so maybe you can see it. Um, so the spy chart, like I said, it was this area here where I was looking to go short. So basically was shorting it right here and looking for that downtrend, right? And I covered right here. So you can see the trade was here. So I entered uh, right when the stock was hitting this descending line. And so I'll show you exactly the resistance level that I'm talking about, which was 381.50, which is the, is, is the support and resistance line, right? So when you look at this level, you can see that the 381.50 was support going up and then resistance coming down, right? So support resistance turns into support, right? Boom, support, giving you nice support off of it, and then it cracks and turns to resistance. And so this is this is why like it's so important to wait for these setups. These are not things that you're just gonna jump into. These are things that you look for confirmation that you're waiting for the right opportunity. Now yesterday I won't you know I won't lie, I lost yesterday. Yesterday, I, I traded a, a put contract thinking that the SPY was going to go lower, and it didn't, right? So basically, yesterday, what I ended up doing was I saw the mo the, the SPY ripping lower, and I, and I bought a put contract like here, and I was hoping it would crack down, but it didn't. Instead, it went back up and stopped me out. So I lost yesterday, but it was a really small loss. And that's the thing about a lot of these entries, right, is that they give you a really good risk to reward. So with this entry, I'm entering at the VWAP, right? I'm entering right at 238, which is the VWAP. It shoots up, comes back down, gives you a scare, but then, you know, 
just rips because you're either going to get confirmed that what you are seeing is what's actually happening and that this is a rejection of this line and then it's going to turn to resistance. So when I'm shorting it right at this 381.50, what I'm saying is that this is the line in the sand that was previous support. Now it's becoming resistance, so it's not going to go above this line. And if it does, it's going to be very quick and then it's going to get shot back down, right? So you can see that there was a little bit of... Um, you know, a little bit of scariness on this first candle because you had this breakdown where it looked like, oh, hey, man, I just, you know, bam, immediately we're correct. And then it came right back up to that level, came right back up to retest that 381.40, 381.50, and, uh, you know, made me sweat for about 30 seconds. And then, bam, you just get this rejection, right? And then here is where I took my initial profit. So when we hit the VWAP, which was here, 274 was initial profit. So that was when I sold. So I took two contracts here. First one sold it at BWAP. The second one, I almost sold it in this candle. I'm so happy that I didn't, but I was so close to selling it in that candle. Like I was, this candle, so close to stopping me out. It didn't. So I was waiting to see if it was going to break this channel line. So the mid channel of the Keltner channel was that, is that yellow yellowish kind of line yellow greenish kind of line so i was waiting to see if it was going to break above that i was out and i would take a small gain you know i would have been um basically i would have been flat because these are pretty expensive contracts so like it i probably would have bought out maybe 20 30 dollars but i was already down 30 dollars on the day so it would have been break even right anyway so i sold one here when it when it hit the vwap and then i waited and i waited and then it cracked the VWAP, gave me that move that I was really looking for down to 380. Um, it was really 379.50 that I was that I ended up selling at, you know, 389.60 because, or 379.60 because I was only expecting it to go down to 380. I wasn't expecting it to crack all the way down, you know. So it gave me more than I wanted, and then uh, you had this push on the contracts right up to 350, and I was out. I was like, yep, I'm good. Take my 350 and I'm down. And as you can see, like if I would have held it, I could have got 391 probably. Um, but, and this is where it would have been nice if I would have took three contracts and I sold two there and then I had one still holding and I could have, and I would have gotten out the other one at 391. It would have been even better. Um, but sometimes, especially with these, I'm not 100%, you know, I, I don't know necessarily how they, how they trade. I haven't been trading them in any significant way for a long time so i'm just using this as a way to see um how how they trade and it just gives me an idea of being able to be com more confident when trading options and that's that's really all i'm doing here that's why like i'm not taking huge contract sizes but you know it still is a lot of money like i made like over 150 or 100 almost yeah over 150 on that trade right like just bam and made it back everything I lost on the day and gave me some, right? So uh, scary, but at the same time, when you can get the kind of gains that you can get from these contracts, it it really doesn't make sense to try and trade some whippy stock that's gonna cut, you know, that's gonna chop you out like five or six times before you actually get any kind of significant, you know, increase in your profits. So that's. The only thing right like if those big high moving stocks if you can get in them quick and out quick and make the money that's how you got to do it but you can't be um like a sniper or sit back and wait for things to confirm because a lot of times it's just going to chop you out you might think it's going to confirm and then it chops you out so i just sorry i rant guys i just i tell you my thoughts and why i prefer to trade these spy options and you know all those sometimes like yesterday it was a red day um it was a small red day it was a 30 40 dollar red day you know so, and I think, so yesterday I'll, and I'll even show you guys here, um, the VK. So the one tra stock I did trade yesterday was this one VKTX. Um, and this is the one that basically made me almost green on the day. Um, so this is one of those ones that, um, I shorted off the open and I lost on the short. Um, I lost on the short and then immediately got into the long and this is something that you know 
I feel like has been happening a lot lately, and that's a lot of these crazy whipping stocks will start to sell off in the morning, make you look like they're gonna flush, like it was selling off all pre-market. You had this huge move from four dollars to eight, you know, hundred percent move, and then it just started to sell off. So at the open, you thought, hey, okay, maybe this thing's just gonna reverse and sell off. It doesn't look very strong. So I was trying to get in for the short. Immediately stopped out because um, I realized that it, like all the uh, volume was coming in green. So then I was like, okay, immediately flipped to the long side. So I was literally out at 76, in at 76. Immediately flipped to the long side and immediately start printing profits. So, you know, in hindsight, it would have been nice to hold these for longer. But at the same time, I was trying to be quick with these. And that's why what happens here is that although I sold here, I should have been reloading here, right? And then just keep playing these moves until it, proves to me that it fails and this is when I made the bulk of my profits was on this was right here in these trades right so I was shorting it once it gave you this kind of little head and shoulders pattern where it tried to break out with the head here failed second shoulder bam um, it broke down 650 I was shorting at 635 added again at 612 covered in the 590s and then uh, it started to come back up so I uh, covered again and it, you know in hindsight this is one of those trades where it would have been nice just to cover everything down here into the 590s. That would have been a much better play. But unfortunately, I was hoping for a breakdown and this to go lower. It didn't. So then I tried to reshort um, again and lost uh, on it. But overall, turned green on the stock. Mainly from that short, you know, this ended up being like a nice $30, $40 short plus this long um, basically made me green on the day, although I traded it a lot and it was expensive to trade because I took so many trades on it. So that yesterday is what kind of made up for this loss on the SPY, although it was a really small loss on the SPY because I only took um, a very small position. And I'll go over that trade with you real quick before I um, end this video. Uh, but that trade yesterday um, and this is kind of let's see where it was I think it was right around here yeah I think so I'm not 100% sure about this trade but I'm pretty sure when it ended up happening yeah 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 this looks exact okay so I was shorting it here so about 11.30, I saw this was starting to break down lower. It looked weak. It looked like it was coming back up to this check, this resistance level. So I started, I think I bought contracts like in here somewhere, maybe even on this candle and thinking, okay, I'll buy it for resistance and it's going to break lower. And it just went up. So I, I got out um, pretty sure when it broke above the SMA here. So like I think I was in here on this candle and then it started to go a little lower, but then immediately broke up above, started hold and I was out. Um, so it was a really fast loss, about $30, $40 on two contracts because I only lost about $0.20 cents because I was looking to sell quick if it wasn't going to hold the level, and it didn't. So And then it immediately flushed back up, like, you know. So I'm really glad that I covered where I did and that I was taking the trade knowing that if this resistance wasn't going to hold, then I was going to get out. So that was the loss yesterday on the SPY. Like I said, it was put contract. Everything looked weak, so I was trying to just carry through, follow the momentum. You saw the volume was mostly red. Um, just didn't give me what I wanted. Um, and obviously, today you can tell um, I, I only entered the trade once the red volume was, was guaranteed. Once it was confirmed that the red volume had cracked the downtrend and the red volume was coming in stronger than the buying, that's when I was confirmed to go short right in on this candle right here cool all right guys so that's it for this video please come back for some more i'll give you guys some updates on what i'm doing um like i said the whole the entire market looks shit so crypto is probably going to be shit i know I, I i make a lot of crypto videos before but really i'm just i'm just holding i thought about selling a little bit might sell a little bit if we get a pop in the markets and everything goes back up but i'm holding mostly i'm not selling even if i sell it's going to be like 25 percent of my crypto and that's really just just to main stop the downside from being so big. If we get like a 30, 40% drop, I'd like to put more money in. So if I take 
30% out now, I can buy back later 20, 30% lower, which is what you're going to want to do with a lot of situations, right? Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Back for another video, and hopefully you guys have a great day. Thank you.